Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship this morning. Please stand for the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He come before you this day, O oh God, with many thoughts and feelings. Come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. We come to worship knowing that you are with us in all things and all times. Let us worship then the God of our hope and our salvation. You may be seated. In the way of announcements, you can look at the back of your bulletin. Of course, we have worship at 11 a.m. If anyone knows of families in need, uh, we are, the UNW is giving out food baskets. Uh, so let Jane know if you know someone in need. This Wednesday at Fairview, we have our brown bag Bible study at noon on Wednesdays. Joan Perticary told me to say hello. That means anything <laughs> to you. That's my music lady. She knows some of your folk. Um, there's online opportunities. Our services are posted on YouTube and Facebook on Sunday by Sunday night. Monday night is story time. We have the cute little story that you can read. And Wednesday and Saturday, we pause for prayer. Is there any other announcements that need to be made? We stand for our first hymn. Don't worry, we're not going to sing all six verses. We're going to sing the first and the last. I learned my lesson.
Judy? Dominic Caldwell, who's having surgery on Friday. I asked you to be with the doctor. 
doctors and nurses that they would do well by him. I pray for a uh, speedy recovery and that they get all the cancer out. I lift up Dawn, who still has three more treatments to go. I ask that you would strengthen our body for these treatments and that you would heal whatever damage they do as it does heal the cancer too. We thank you that some are doing better when you take them off the list. But we also want to think of Judy who's moving and all those who will be affected by this move, her friend, best friend Marge, that she would just comfort those that don't uh, deal with that, that change well and just be with her and that would be a good transition for her. And we're glad we've been able to celebrate a birthday with family. We're starting to be able to do some normal things again. We're thankful for that, Lord. We ask that you would bless our service now and that you would be with us. And hear us now as we pray the prayer we taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. to you, we ask that you would be with him and heal his body so he doesn't have this, this issue of passing out. We pray that you would help him when he does have those incidents, that he doesn't hurt himself, and be with him, whoever helps take care of him as well. That they have patience. You know, we pray. Um, no problem. Now we continue to worship the Lord by presenting our tithes and our offerings.
Unfortunately, I forgot to have the children's message put in the bulletin, but I do have one, and I don't care if the kids aren't here, but sometimes y'all learn more from the children's message than you do. That's my fault, I know. That's okay, I could have remembered before when you, now. When you gave me all the lessons, yeah. I went ahead and did that, so I didn't carry that over. That's okay. I think you'll enjoy it anyway. Oh, you're still here. Yeah, you can sit in the front pew if you want, because Danny's not here. He's at a training show, by the way. Anyhow, I got all some snacks this morning. Do you need snacks? Anybody like doggy treats? Mm. Now, to be honest, I have ate a portion of one of these before. I have to confess, just a mess with my dog. So I sat there and said, do you want to eat a little bit of it? It tastes about what you would think. Now look at these. It says, helps clean the teeth and freshen the breath. Mmm, that doesn't sound very good, does it? And this animal is the flavor kind. These are the nasty, regular kind. But I bet you would rather have cookies or fruit or something, right? Well, you know who loves these treats? Doggies do. I have two doggies, so I go through a lot of these. <laughs> do you guys have any dogs? Yes? No? Maybe? Do you have a doggie? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> That's sad. But other people have doggies, and they love treats. A dog will chew just about anything for a treat. They sit, roll over, shake all, do all kinds of treats, things for treats. They'll do whatever you want for the treat. I even shake the box outside to make it come in. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Do you know something? When the dog does something for a treat, they do it for a selfish reason. They just want to get the biscuit. They don't care. I have one dog that goes outside and comes right back in and wants a biscuit. Because <laughs> he has trained me. <laughs> I have two dogs. But anyhow, when you first train a dog, they become conditioned to do tricks for these treats. And if you're not waving the box or the treat in front of them, they just walk away and ignore you. And sometimes we respond to God in this way. We act nice and we pray and go to church because we want God to give us treats. <laughs> we want God to bless us. But God doesn't want us to love him like that. He wants us to worship him and go to church when the good times and bad times. He wants us to love him without a promise of treats. When good things happen, we should rejoice and thank God, but not forget in the bad times to thank him too. That's what I want to tell you about the treats. And I'll take them home. Thank you for coming forward. You want you can sit up there for the rest of service. Okay. That was easy. Now we're in the middle of a sermon series, Lenten sermon series called Purple Theory, different spiritual disciplines. This week we're talking about worship. Scripture is from 1 Corinthians 10, verses 31 to 33. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 and 33. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Give no offense to the Jews or to the Greeks or the church of God, just as I try to please some, everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that they may be saved. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. And we've all experienced moments when we were not sure if what we were doing was really worship, or wondered what truly worship is. Perhaps we have felt as though we were worshiping when we were outside of church, maybe staring at the edge of the ocean, going down the shore, that's fun, and you can see God there, or climbing a mountain, maybe an intimate gathering with friends and family. Some of the most spiritual moments I have had in the past was sitting in a deer stand. Now I don't run anymore because it's too much work. <laughs> it is. You gotta get up early to get the good spot and the deer come out. But there's nothing more beautiful than to sit in a deer stand and watch the sun come up. Because you watch the black sky and all the leaves become gray first, and then you start to see the colors as the sun comes up. And then nature starts stirring. You get the squirrels and they scare you to death because you think it's deer. You see everything stirring in the woods. And you almost have to worship God for how ma majestic it seems when everything just wakes up and the sun comes up. 
And scripture tells us that everything we do is worship. From our breathing to our eating, as long as it's done with the intention of praising God. There's no real standard on how to worship. Like prescriptions on how many prayers need to be said, how many verses of the hymns we sing, or what hymn we sing out of. Worship starts with the intention that everything that is done in a day is done to give glory to God. And it's not a particular order of worship, or whether we forget to put things in the worship service. But worship, both public and private, should be done with the intention to bring God glory. It's not about perfection, thank God, because he wouldn't get that from me. It's about living our lives as disciples. Now, verse 31 tells us no matter what we do, whether we're living, breathing, eating, drinking, whatever, we should do it for God. To give God glory, show gratitude. This opens up the possibility and freedom for all sorts of regular daily things becoming worship. Sunday morning is worship is important, but it's almost just as important to make worship an everyday part of your life. I dare say, if you aren't worshiping God Monday through Saturday, when you worship on Sunday may ring empty. In the context of this passage, the Apostle Paul is talking about Christians eating and drinking with people of other religions and eating food purchased from them when they uh, sacrifice idols. Paul is arguing against those of the say it's not lawful to do that. He's arguing against rigid ways of thinking about how to live out our faith. Not only is it permissible to eat and drink with our neighbors uh, and people of other religions, Paul says because of the freedom we have in Christ these acts, and the very acts are one of the single things we can do, come worship. Kindness and openness to the hostility of our neighbors, even those regular moments turn into an opportunity to witness to our faith. Paul encourages the Corinthians to be thoughtful about what they choose to do or not do in the company of unbelievers. So that God is glorified by the way they interact with each other, and so that we don't harm or hurt others. So how do you worship? Where do you feel most connected? And what element in worship do you feel connected to God most through? For me, it's the music. Preaching can be eh, good or bad, depending on the preacher, you know how that goes. And preachers do help people connect with God. For me, it's always the music that grounds me. So being aware of what makes you feel connected shifts how you think of what it means to worship. You may have to think outside the box. Turn your daily activities into worship moments through transforming intentions. Now some will say you can worship anywhere or joke that they're worshiping God from the golf course on Sunday morning. And the point of my message is that we can worship every day in our everyday tasks, playing golf. <laughs> However, corporate worship you know, every Sunday is important too. We can worship God on our own, but we're not meant to do this journey alone. We're here to encourage each other, pray for each other, and just ask each other, how is it going? <laughs> and even though we can worship alone, it's important to be part of your church. Worship isn't simply something you feel. A lot of times we say that. And it isn't the name we give some experience we do or we seek by singing or lifting our hands or closing our eyes. It's something we do with our body and all of our life. We can worship God through eating and drinking and typing and speaking. And maybe cooking is your gift, not mine. Driving, that's not so much either. But other countless ways you can be a worshipful moments. We worship God whenever. We perform an act out of a desire to draw attention and glory to God. Especially that was revealed through Christ's Son's sacrifice. And I've heard people say that an expressive singer is a real worshiper sometimes. And whether or not we are real worshipers better determined by how quickly we forgive each other. When, or what we do when no one's looking. When we become Christians, we automatically become worshipers. The rest of our lives is a preparation for eternity, for where we will have wholehearted worship, which will never end, even in eternity.
Now the Germans have a word for worship. It's Gottsenvents. Gottsenvents. It means God serves. And it's a twofold sense of service. Now we render service to God, but God also renders uh, service to us. There are many Sundays where you're busy singing and praying and listening and find out surprise, God does show up here. You came here depressed and you leave uplifted. You wander in, plop in the pew, only needed to leave with a new sense of hope. Maybe you come anxious because of the silence in your life. Maybe you're missing someone. And you leave assured by a strong, clear word from God. God has been serving you. And you come to serve God so God can serve you better as well. May God give us the grace to get a good start in giving him constant worship. It's what we are made for. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship. We love you and we're grateful for our church family here and those that are online. Help us to be worshipful in everything we do. In name we pray. Our next hymn is number 700. Should be a little more familiar, still a little high, but we'll make it through. We'll sing the first and the last. Please stand with me. Sing Abide with Me, number 700. Turn his 